Hi everyone, this is Bob with SailTechProductions.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at some tips for mixing electric guitar tracks. So let's get started. <music> What I have here is a Logic Pro project sent to me by Tony, one of my subscribers from Germany. Tony has done a great job of organizing this project. Now, what I mean by that is that I can briefly look at this project and I know exactly what's going on. The tracks are well documented and I understand the routing. Let me tell you what we have going on here. We have a MIDI uh, drum track here. Um, this was originally... Easy Drummer. I don't have the Easy Drummer plug-in, so I just pulled in uh, the Smash Kit here in Logic. So it's not going to be exactly the plug-in that he had, but it's going to work for the tutorial. Uh, this is just a panned uh, doubled guitar track. This section here is five guitar tracks. Here we have double tracks. Now, on each one of these tracks that are duplicated, it's actually a different performance. So that's a great way of doing this to get this wall of guitar sound. Here's another section with a double recorded track. And let's see, we have a double uh, recorded bass here. Now, if I go over to Logic's mixer, I want to show you one of the things he did with rooting. Each guitar section goes to its own respective bus. So like this left and right uh, pan guitar track goes to bus one. These five uh, tracks here that are similar go to bus five. Bus four, we have a, a left and right. Bus seven, we have another panned uh, double guitar track. So you can see what he has going on here. And basically, even though this is only 14 tracks, it simplifies the process because all of these are rooted to these aux channel strips. So you can see bus one, bus two, bus three, bus four, etc. And this makes it easy for mixing. So now instead of 14 faders to mix, once I balance these guitar tones out, now I only have basically uh, six faders here that I need to uh, mix. There's a couple of them here that um, he created them but didn't use them for whatever reason. So like bus six here, see it doesn't go to anything, and bus eight, I believe. Um, yeah, bus eight doesn't really go to anything. So just simplify this. I'm going to delete um, this aux channel and this one. So let's go back over to the arrange uh, area. Now, part of my organization is coloring tracks. He has all guitar tracks, so it's not a big deal. But generally, when I have, you know, drums and bass and keyboards and synths and acoustic guitar, electric guitar, I like to organize them by color as well. So, for example, I'll highlight my regions. And in uh, Logic, I'm hitting Option C, and my drums will be red. And then I'll come down here and highlight these... Um, these two bass tracks and those are orange. So anyway, you get the idea. The other thing is I'll go into the markers and I see he has a couple of markers here. Looks like he started. Let's see what this first one is here. Um, nothing. So I'll put intro. Oh, he's got another marker in there. I'll just delete that one. So let's call this the, uh, the intro to the song and then this could be like verse one. And so I do something similar to that and just go into different sections of the song. So I'll not do that here, but you get the idea. Now, the other thing that Tony has done very well is gain staging. So you can see just by looking at the waveform on these tracks, you can see he didn't try to blow it out here. Um, so you're not going to see anything, even on the stereo bus, you're not going to see anything above minus 10 dB or an uh, negative eight, something like that. So very good uh, gain staging. You know, everybody's trying to get their mix as loud as possible and usually at the expense of destroying the, uh, the music. Now, the biggest mistake I see beginners make is clipping or killing the dynamic range in their music with overuse of compressors and limiters. Folks, take a lesson from Tony here. His master bus, again, like I said, never goes over about negative 8 dB. That's 8 to 10 dB of headroom, that's perfect. So let's just start at the beginning here and see what we have going on.
So guys, whenever I mix electric guitar, I even do this with acoustic guitar, I'm an LCR kind of guy, left, center, or right. So I don't spend too much time uh, on the panning here. That's just a personal preference, so you can make your own decisions on that. But I'm going to take these tracks that we're working on, and I'm going to hard pan them left and right. He went a little left here. I'm going to go hard left and right. So this one is a little left, little right, uh, left, right. That one is centered, so I'm going to keep it centered uh, left and right. So we're going to work that way. We'll look at this bass here a little bit later. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, normally, you don't double a bass track. Um, so if he's trying to get a little punch, uh, I'm going to do a little, something a little bit different with that later. Now, the first thing I normally go for is an EQ and then uh, a compressor next. It looks like he's already compressed these tracks. So we'll start with the EQ. Let me just solo this one up. I'll center this up again. Here's Logic Stock uh, EQ. I'm going to turn the analyzer on. Start here at the beginning. We'll take a listen. Yeah, you can see he high passed here, so you can see a lot of this below 100 is cut out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a low pass filter and cut out everything. Uh, till around 200 and see if we have anything in that low end. I'm still seeing a little bit below 100 there, so I'm going to take another look. I'm going to turn the volume up here. Yeah, below about 100, there's still, there's still too much there for me. This low end, when you start adding multiple tracks, and in this case, we're going to add like 14 guitar tracks, this just builds up and makes your mix muddy. The other thing it does is it works your compressor a little bit hard. So we're going to use a bus compressor. So we don't want all of this information in there hitting the compressor. Okay, let's take another listen. If we wanted to go the other way, we could listen to the high end like so. So now I know I want to set this low pass here around 7. And that'll just cut some of this fizz out. Now I'm going to go on a hunt for bad stuff, and I can even go on a hunt for some good stuff. I'm going to do that by really pulling up the volume of one of these bands, narrowing the cue, and just sweep around. So here we go. And I already know I want to look between 2 and 500, because that's generally where the bad stuff is, either mud or boxiness. I'm going to pull out a little bit around 4.30. So I'm going to go offline and do something similar to the rest of these guitar tracks so we can keep it moving. I really didn't find much that needed EQ in, so I just high-passed the rest of the guitar tracks. I did notice some minor things that needed attention, like this cut right here. Um, it left a little bit of string noise in there, so here we go. You hear that right there? So let me just zoom in here, and what we'll do is we'll trim. Let's just trim both of them back and let's see what that sounds like yeah that's that's good and now we'll just uh we'll just put a fade in there be surprised how that little string noise there at some point in the mix you'll be listening to it and go what in the heck is going on there and it's just little things like that so on your edits and your cuts just clean them up now there's some arpeggios that come in here. It's these five guitar tracks here. And then these power chords right before it, they just kind of drop out abruptly. So what I'm gonna do is just solo up uh, and let you hear this transition. And when they drop out, you just, you really notice it here. So take a listen. It's that sudden drop in volume there that was just really kind of bugging me. So. What I would do here is just take this, maybe a couple of measures there, and fade that out. Yeah, so let's try this. 
Go back about two measures, and just let that gradually come down. Creates a little bit of a uh, smoother transition between those two areas. Now these double guitar tracks, as you can hear, is really working well. This is easy to pull off with chords or rakes or stabs, uh, power chords, but in monophonic instruments like a bass, especially with this fast tempo, it's not easy to pull off a double part like this. You can see the bass is doubled down here, and the bass player uh, tightens up his timing as the tune progresses. But you'll hear what I'm talking about um, in the first couple of measures as far as the timing, so it's kind of tough to do. Let me just solo up these uh, the two bass parts here. So I'm guessing what he was trying to do here is by doubling these parts, playing two different uh, parts there, was thicken that bass up. So we're going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to mute this second track here, and we're just going to work with one bass track. And we'll see if we can do a couple of things with EQ, sidechain compression, and maybe a little distortion to fatten this bass up so it sits in the mix a little better. Now this song is in the key of C, and let's look at some bass frequencies. Okay, so here's our key of C, and the lowest uh, note on a four-string bass is the E, and you can see that's 41 hertz here. So you can see if I go up from there to the C, the lowest C note on a bass is going to be 65 uh, he's got an F in there, I think, as the lowest note. So this should be our lowest frequency. So those are the frequencies we're kind of looking for on this uh, bass guitar. Now, by the way, you can download this free chart on my website at celltechproductions.com. Just register, and you'll find it in the registered users area of the site, along with some other free stuff like drum samples. So I have the uh, bass soloed up here. And I looped an area that uh, is pretty much representative of the rest of the mix. So we'll pull up an EQ and see what we have going on here on the bass. First thing I noticed is it looks like he has it high passed below uh, 100, very similar to the way we did the guitars. And it sounds like he might be playing an octave higher than what I expected him to play. So, for example, let me hit that first note again. So that's the C, and notice it's up here around uh, 130. So remember that C note was at 65 hertz, and that C note he's playing is 130. So anytime you double the frequency, you go up an octave. So that's fine. He's not using, if he's not playing anything below 100, then that's okay. I might retract this bass and tighten up the uh, bass player's timing a little bit and also get him to play an octave lower. Uh, but let's see what the lowest, lowest note on here should be the F, which is the uh, fourth in the key of C. So let's see what we have here. Yeah, it's right here. So we're looking at, if we just move that over to that point, I'm lining up this point and moving that there just to see what the frequency is and you can see it's 86. I said my, my low F here should be, what, around 42? Yeah, so that's about right. So he is playing an octave higher, and then, uh, and then it looks like he's high pass there. So what I'm going to try to do is just work with what I have here. I'll try to, um, I'm gonna try to bring out some more of these frequencies. I mean, if it's not there, you can't pull it out, right? But let me play around with this a bit. So I'm getting a little more of the frequencies that are available just by uh, boosting that a little bit. And then, then I'll just high pass back to about um, 50 or so because we know there's not going to be anything uh, below that. So now I'm going to create a bus here. I'll just go to bus 10, and this is going to be my side chain compression. If I go to the mixer, I can see I've created this aux 1, which is the input from bus 10. 
And what I want to put on there is some distortion. And we'll just go with this distortion too. This is, I'm using all logic um, plugins here. So what I'm going to do is put this send here at Unity. So we're going to have a lot of bass here. Let me see. I'll just mix that in. So I want to listen to more of what's going on here. All right, now I'm just going to set this distortion plug in. So I've added a little bit of distortion to it there, give it a little bit of grit. I'm going to do something like an 1176 uh, emulation. And for Logic, that's going to be vintage FET. I'm just going to play with the compression a little bit. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit more crazy with the EQ here. This is more of a New York style compression where I'm accentuating the lows and maybe some of the highs to bring out this bass a little bit. So this is going to be pretty, pretty drastic here. Let's give it a little bit of a growl there. And now we want to come over here. that around uh, 32 and then I'm going to go to the compressor now and going to really compress the heck out of this thing so maybe I don't know about an 8 to 1 ratio medium tack medium release I don't like uh, auto gain so I'll just make up the gain myself and let's compress a little bit So we got a lot of compression going on there. I made up the 8 dB of uh, gain reduction. Now we just want to mix that in with the dry bass. So let me put this back here at Unity. I better label this. Let's call it sidechain bass. Bring this all the way down and we'll mix it in a little bit. Now I'm going to do that in context of the mix. You can hear that the bass is cutting through a little bit better with that distortion and also the heavily compressed and EQ'd uh, part on this channel here. So I'll mute it. And now with it. Now I want to put a mix bus compressor just to glue the mix together. I like to use the SSL G series master bus compressor for this purpose, but I'm just going to stay in Logic and uh, we'll grab a Logic emulation. So I'm going to go over here and select Dynamics, Compressor, and in Logic, the circuit type I want to use is the Vintage VCA Compressor. Now for this, you want to use about a 2 to 1 ratio. You want the slowest attack time, the fastest release time, and then I'm going to turn the auto gain off and just make up that gain. On the gain reduction needle here, I'm looking for about 2 dB of gain reduction. So here we go. I'm just pulling down the threshold till I get that 2 dB of gain reduction. And so now I'm going to make up that 2 dB. Now without it, back on. So 
So now we have a mix bus compressor to glue the mix together. So let's check our mix and see how we did. I have this Magic AB plugin so we can compare the original to our mix. So let me just loop a section of this song that has the most going on. I'll start with the B section, which is the original, and then I'll just toggle back and forth. So I think by pulling out a little more of the low end, we gave the guitars a touch more clarity and made the mix less muddy. Hard panning the guitars really opened up the stereo field in this mix. Using one bass track tightened up the overall low end. And using sidechain compression on the bass with the 1176 emulation and some distortion added some punch to the bass. So there you go guys, a few tips on mixing electric guitar tracks. Hopefully you found a few things you can use here. Please leave your comments and subscribe and I'll see you next time.